I'm going to wing this, so forgive me. Um, I've known all three of these gentlemen for more than 30 years. Uh, Jim and I go back to Calzona days, the precursor to the Selection 8s. Um, Sharif I met at the 1992 World Championships in, uh, in Newport, where I watched him break a hoop in practice. <laughs> In 1991, my own croquet mentor, C.B. Smith, and I were playing a pickup game on the lawns of the Beverly Hills Croquet Club in Roxbury Park. And C.B. and I were, you know, pretty grubby. We would wear t-shirts and, you know, didn't really care much how we looked. We were just concentrating on how we played. And up comes this young fellow, immaculately dressed in croquet whites. His shoes were clean. <laughs> His pants were pressed. He had a collared shirt that was actually tucked in with a belt and a crest. And he introduced himself as Mohammed Kamal. But he then said, my friends call me Kimo. And from that moment forward, I have called him Kimo. He has been my friend. We, you know, Kimo told us first that he'd come to California to be a doctor. He, he'd uh, gone to medical school at one of the elite medical universities in the world in Cairo, but he's had to pass his boards in California uh, before he could begin practicing. And in between studying for the boards, he played croquet. And we found out very quickly, he didn't just play croquet, he played great croquet. He brought with him a sack of balls from Egypt. They, they were rocks. <laughs> the hardest thing I've, I've ever seen. I wondered if they'd been you know, quarried from the pyramids. <laughs> and he had this old mallet, the likes of which I'd never seen. And he had a way of swinging it. We all know that there are three basic grips in croquet, the standard, the Solomon, and the Irish. There are four grips. There's the Egyptian grip, which is unique to its own way and generates so much power, the kind of power that I saw Sharif use. And Kimo used the same power. He hit rockets on the court and straight. And he brought to our Beverly Hills Croquet Club the game of Egyptian golf croquet. This is very early in the growth of the sport. And he's really responsible for certainly the growth in Beverly Hills he, every year, he held, he organized a golf croquet tournament in Beverly Hills. He bought the trophies, and he encouraged all of us to play. And we learned to really enjoy it. We, we actually had a thing we would do. Uh, he taught us golf croquet while we taught him American and association croquet. So Kimo and I would start our day with a game of golf croquet, and he would usually just shellac me. And then we'd go into an either American or association, and that always depended on what tournament was coming up next, what we were gonna play. But it was an absolute pleasure to witness the growth of croquet as shepherded by Mohammed Kamal. Um, in 1999, he organized the very first international golf croquet tournament in the United States. And he brought the best players over from Egypt to play the best players in the United States. It was held on the lawns of the Beverly Hills Croquet Club, and it was a tremendous success. And I think today, as Dave's notes go flying upside down, uh, today I think we here who enjoy golf croquet as much as with the other codes uh, owe a lot to, to Muhammad. Uh, I also found out that Muhammad wasn't just a great croquet, croquet player. He's a great person, a fantastic person, a great friend. I don't know how many of you know this, but when the COVID uh, breakout happened two years ago, Mohammed redirected the resources of his own company to begin uh, the development of a rapid PCR test. And it was approved by the FDA in an emergency fashion uh, in early July, I believe, of 2020, and help save many lives. That is the character of my friend.
So it's with, it's with great honor and humility that I introduce my friend Kimo, Dr. Mohammed Kamal, to the U.S. Croquet Hall of Fame. <laughs> 